Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art My Way. Um, and that is in Art Your Way. You tell me what you are interested in learning and I am more than happy to do my absolute best to make a class based on what you guys want to learn. Otherwise it's Art My Way, the teacher's way, and well then you get what you get. So what we are going to be doing today is I'm going to be teaching you how to make spiral head pins. Um, it's another one of those findings out there. Head pins are uh, something that you can buy pretty easily, but you already have to buy them in pre-sizes. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to make them yourself, so that way you can make your head pin whatever length you want to make it. It could be the whole roll, which I don't know why you do that, but it would be interesting to see. Uh, have fun with this class and then post what you have made with your head pins and if one of you is brave enough to make an entire spiral head pin and take the entire loop of wire, please post it. I want to see it. I want to see what shenanigans you guys are all up to uh, after you've seen my classes. Uh, just post a picture in the comments below. It'd be great. So what we are going to start with is a nice cut well actually what we should start with are the tools so what do we need for this well it's just four little things uh, the file is optional uh, and I'll show you why here in a bit it's a matter of preference and style choice but you just need really your round nose your square nose oh, that is there and see if I can get it to there we are hi and you can see he's covered in nice fresh tape for this project here and that's a good thing you definitely uh, considering how many people end up marking up their head pins they don't like doing head pins because they always end up marred up well a little bit of tape on your tools solve all your problems well not all of them if you're giving it the death grip then time to lighten up a little bit and the other tool is our nippers and this guy is the, the set of nippers that I have that will cut it nice and flush on both ends of the wire. So that way I don't have a nice pointy piece that I have to worry about, uh, oh, filing down or tucking and hiding places in my project. Uh, your regular old nippers, um, they can work just as well. I uh, just keep in mind that whatever wire ends up on this side of the nippers as opposed to the flat side, that side's going to need to be filed because there will be a pointy bit. So, all right, now for the actual wire itself. You can basically choose any gauge wire. I would not recommend going 16. That's a little bit too extreme. That's a really big gauge. And most of your jewelry tools, that's, you're more likely to ruin and break your own tools because a lot of this is all going to be done on the ends of our tools. And yeah, when you take into account how thin some of these guys get here, you're going to bend it. You're going to not necessarily break it. It would take a special kind of talent to break it but you're going to end up messing up your tools and their longevity in the long run. And so what we are going to start with, sorry, it's interesting trying to uh, see through my f recorder here and taping what I'm doing without actually looking at my real hands. So what we are going to do, it's a lot, a lot of what we learned in making our own ear wires here you're going to take your wire, and that's a little too tall. You want it to be down in between your pliers. I want to make mine right on the end here, on my smallest one. You can choose either or. That, that's just your choice. Um, and you don't want to be able to feel them along the tops here. And what you're going to do is rotate and rotate. Now, you want to stop before you finish your P. Yeah. Alright, just like that. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our square nose here, nice and softly padded. And we are going to grab the back part of our little spiral that we have started. It doesn't look like a spiral yet, but it will. We want just a little bit of the end popping out and the rest of your wire coming out this way. The reasoning for that is that the rest of this wire has all been shaped perfectly around your pliers, or at least darn near perfectly. So you want to be able to hold it nice and snug so that way nothing gets moved around, nothing gets pulled, and nothing gets tightened where it shouldn't be tightened. So you're going to start rotating. Get a better grip here. All right, let's try that again. Start to rotate. Now, if you notice, that just, instead of becoming a nice smooth arc, that just did a mountain right there. It's peaked right over the top. Well, which pretty much look like that. That's okay for now. So we're gonna grab a hold of him again and rotate. And what is shaping it at this point is going to be what the beginning of the spiral that you made because you held it nice and still. I will come back in and fix. Yep, flatten. Have you noticed that it's a little wibble wobbly? Like for instance, mine is um, this part, top part here is higher than the rest of it. You just go in with your square nose, give it a nice little flattening. A lot better. All right. Ah, I hear a bad cat. You know who you are. Now, I always kind of end up with a, almost a triangular shape. You'll have a point here, you'll have a point over here at the end, and you got a point up top. That's okay. I kind of do mine a little looser. So that way, as you are building and coiling, the more you coil, the less you're going to see or notice that kind of a thing. And you just keep pinching, rotate, pinch and rotate the wire, pinch and rotate your square nose, pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate, and there we have it. Now this is part here. We're going to grab a hold of our little wire and you want to kink it back just a little bit so that way it kind of looks like he's standing at attention or a cobra about ready to strike and you can tighten that up just a little bit you know make him more where you want him to if you don't want him that quite upright there we go. and there you have it a spiral now if you look and most people they're not going to be looking that closely at something like this because the outside's nice and round so that along with how really nice and perfect the inside is it creates an optical illusion that the rest of it it's nice and perfect and round so you know no no reason to go finding details that people just really aren't going to see and as you can see because of that tape I gave him some death grips in there because he just didn't want to uh, behave for me but you can see because of that tape it's still nice and shiny or there we go nice and shiny uh, not a whole lot of marking or marring and then from there all you have to do is determine the length that you need or want for beads or whatever it is that you're doing nip it off and then go on about your business from there so nice and easy little head pin there now for the second method that we're going to do we're going to do that all closed so i'm going to give myself a good length i'll figure out something to do with this guy all right get my wire to behave here okay so now we have if you get it away now we have a nice flush beautiful cut there and we're going to ruin it we are going to take our file and we are going to file our wire down 
so that way he becomes the pointiest, the nastiest, the meanest looking little end of a wire nightmare that you've ever seen. You want that guy nice and pointy. And the more slope you give it, and the scarier the point it is, a little dagger or shiv, there you go, uh, the smaller you will be able to coil this. So, and the steps from here are very much the same. So you're going to grab a hold of your wire on the edges. Yeah, I'm on camera. And grab a hold of that guy right on those edges. And I let my pliers slip when I am doing this. Um, I'm not trying to grip it and rotate the whole thing. I am just trying to shape the end of that, that nice pointy bit that I've made. And I'm going to go around with my smaller end of my pliers and just let him slip and rotate around. And once I get it where I think I want it, I'll grip it basically before the area that I started to sharpen. Yeah, come on. The details of my hand are not that important. Come on, camera. The adventures of YouTubing. Hmm. All right, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to grab a hold of this guy before where I sharp or started to sharpen it into a deadly weapon. Because otherwise your, your pliers are just going to keep slipping and slipping and slipping. Because you got grooves already filed into this to for the outside of it to follow. So from there, yep, he slipped. I'm going to rotate just like before, but the difference is that that nice thin little bit that I made it's wanting to shape, curl, and turn already for me. And it's just going to come in nice and flush. Because it just wants to behave and it just doesn't have any substance or mass to really fight you at this point. So, take that guy and make sure to go all the way around. And at this point, this about this is about as far as you're going to be able to rotate it. There we go. With these pliers here, because there's no place to grip back here anymore that it wouldn't be two wires or double the wire, and then it just won't lay right and it just be all kinds of meanness. So we'll come in with our square nose. Doesn't matter too much where you grab it. You don't want to grab it way down here. Because then the wire just gets unruly and it doesn't want to lay right and it just gets mean on you. So you want to get a good hold on him. Maybe just where the wire just hasn't formed yet. And go over your hump. And go over the hump. And again. And do it as many times as you feel necessary for whatever look that you are trying to go for. I'm going to do this with my fingernails because yay for fingernails. All you fellas out there, get yourselves some nails. It really helps out with jewelry making or at least wire weaving. I know that for sure. That's why my nails look awful 99% of the time. So, all right. Got our nice little kink there. And we have a beautiful, beautiful coil. With hardly any of the muss or the fuss of leaving the other end nice and open uh, without filing that very, very end piece there. I just think it makes for an overall easier, manageable, and better look. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that can do this perfectly and it'll be beautiful and gorgeous. Um, it's just such a fuss. Just do a little filing and you're good. Now, let me cut this guy off again. Make sure
sure they're the same length. Hello, nip. All right. Now for a closed one with no uh, no hole through the middle. Although sometimes I like the holes through the middle because then you can add jump rings and have dangles on top of uh, whatever it is that you put on your wire itself. So just like if you if you went for some really weird earrings, really long earring earrings, then you got all kinds of bead beading area surface here, and then you got beading. Uh, potential this way as well or any other form of decoration you want to go for maybe you want to do feathers I always like playing with feathers so all right for speediness sake here so here again starting off with a pretty nice flush wire taking my file and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing except I want to start a little further back where pretty much the thickness of your file, or at least most files that you're going to be able to find for jewelry, that is where you're basically going to want to be putting a nice grade on your wire. Because if you start all the way back here and you're filing across, then you're going to be putting that grade all through that distance. Well, we don't want to go that far. That's, that's a little overkill. See where I've gotten to here. Okay, a little more. Must be more pointy, more deadly than ever before. looks great lovely little toothpick of doom so now we're going to take your toothpick of doom and start just like we did before with the other one that we filed um, whatever end you decide to choose with your pliers it can be the smallest end is going to be on the inside the largest end whatever you're wanting to do I'm gonna grab a hold of him here and I want to let it slip so that way I can at least start to curl that finer delicate end over there let it slip a little and he's starting to rotate him just a little tiny bit here all right from this point here I'm going to collapse what I've been doing so far more inwards so basically let's see if you can focus here so I collapsed this longest piece more inward and then I rotated started here with my small end collapsed it in and then I started to come up here and I collapsed it in just a little bit more and you just kind of keep going and there's going to be a lot of slipping involved in this that's just going to be the nature of the game and you're just going to start to work him into a much much tighter spiral and nudging him around and then he, he'll fight you hold of it with just the tip of there we go and kind of ruined it just a little bit smashed it and that's kind of one of the things with when you have when you're dealing with something that's a little bit filed down to a, a greater weakness level but and see starting you know what I think I'll go ahead and file that and get rid of it now, when you get a booger like this, it's better to take care of it now rather than later. It'll focus here. Take care of little boogers like this now rather than later. So that way you're not filing your entire piece and you're more likely to ruin your entire piece rather than just this little teeny tiny spur.
Because at this point, we don't have too much work in it. It's no big deal to start over at this um, if we mess up too much with our filing. And I'm not pushing down really hard or anything and just lightly going across it. The joy of files, they are your best friend. All right. Yeah, that won't be noticeable. All right. So there we go, we got nice tight coil. And at this point there is just enough for our square nose to grab a hold of. So we'll start rotating it. And really I got my square nose, it's the corner of my square noses that I'm using to get a hold of this teeny, teeny, tiny piece. And that works out pretty great because you got all this area on the outside that is the outer curve of your wire, but you still got a hold of like a humongous part of the body still of your, your coil. So that works out splendidly. And then just like before, pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate. Whoop. He got goofy on me there. Oh my goodness. Now you know why he's the naughty dog. Give it a little kink when you're happy with your coil. And there you have it, closed. So there's three methods right there for making your own coiled head pins or eye pins, whatever you want to call them. So we have, I guess, I, I really don't know if you'd necessarily call this the traditional way, but this is the way most people uh, learn how to do it without the filing involved in a nice square end or even a pointy end from the other nippers that are available out there. And then we have the head pin that has been filed but left open still, uh, which is lots of fun. And then we also have the eye pin. Make them all point the same way. Makes it look so lovely. Like a bunch of lollipops. Uh, that's been really closed down or at least coiled more tightly in the center than the other two. And again, a file can make a humongous difference in being able to get really nice tight pieces. Eh, it looks like I marked that guy up a little bit. I'll put him in the tumbler and he'll be much happier. Yeah. Poor boy. Well, it looks like I need to practice my eye pins just a wee bit more. Death grip. So. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I do hope it was very helpful for you or at least somewhat helpful for you. Um, please like, subscribe and do definitely comment in the comments down below. Let me know what you want to learn. Post what you've been making with the eye pens I've taught you how to make. Post anything that you've learned to make through my videos. I'm more than happy to talk with everybody and discuss what you are up to in the shenanigans that you are unleashing upon the world. Uh, also, I do have a Facebook account. It is Naughty Dog Jewelry. I'll be happy to talk with you there. I also post my videos there, so that way if you want updates as to what I am going to be putting out, uh, please like and subscribe there. Well, I guess you don't subscribe there, but at least like my page. It'd be nice. Um, also, I have an Etsy account, uh, it's Naughty Dog Studios. You can also hang out there and see other things that I'm, other shenanigans I might be up to. You all have the most marvelous day and I hope to see you in the future. Bye.